Almost missed the landing zone. Hello. I'm going to try to keep this simple and straightforward because it's easy to confuse people on obscure and obtuse points of monistic metaphysics. And I'm going to talk about the Pythagorean Trinity. And by the way, that other trinity, the one that everybody else is familiar with, it came from the Pythagorean Trinity. <laughs> By the way, we don't know who it came from before Pythagoras. We can only speculate. Speculation doesn't really serve an enormous, helpful end because people love to speculate. First, we have to start off by talking about the first five digits, first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence, which are one one two three five. Let's repeat that again a couple more times. One one two three five. Yes, first two digits are the first set of the trinity. The second two digits, two and three, are the second set. And the third is the consubstantiality of the first two sets. Yes, here's the real, genuine, original metaphysical trinity. I haven't explained anything yet. I'm getting to it, okay? So let's talk about one, one, two, three, five. Talk about the Pythagorean trinity, where it comes in. And by the way, um, as far as the uh, Greeks are concerned, one is not a number. One is a principle. Yes, it's not, it's not a number. It's a principle. Yes, yeah. I don't know if that you know, registers to you, but it's not a number. It's the principle. Um, I've uh, used this as a simple memorization in talking to people about uh, this original trinity by having all of these words start with an M. They don't necessarily have to be these words, but it kind of works out. And that is monad, mind, magnitude, matter, and man. And I don't literally mean man as the third aspect of the Trinity, but as ontos, being the consubstantiality between, of course, matter and spirit. And of course, I love going back to my radio analogy. Yeah, the, uh, the broadcast, the actual signal, and of course, we could talk about the radio station that emitted the signal, and of course, uh, radio emission is not an emission. It's, of course, as I've said many countless times, a perturbation of the medium. That medium, of course, is uh, the ether. I don't care what word. You can say zero-point energy. You could say counter space. You could say subspace. You could talk about uh, the Akashic realm of Edgar Cayce. It doesn't really matter. Mother Nature certainly doesn't care what silly human beings would refer to uh, pure potential, the original denotation of the term, uh, the ether. Anyway, the uh, broadcast from a radio, by the way, is not the signal. We all kind of suffer from that uh, delusion in that uh, the broadcast is saying, well, you know, tuned to XYZ frequency is the same as the broadcast. No, it's not the case. The broadcast is an interpolation by the radio with its processors, its chipset and its antenna and other components. And then, of course, that manifests as the broadcast. Because the broadcast goes, because you, on a real professional radio, ham radios anyway, for example, you have uh, pitch and gain knobs, and you actually have uh, beat frequency oscillators. You use a thousand things you can actually do to the received or the tuned um, uh, signal to manifest the broadcast. We all have that on our stereo systems in our cars. We could tune into a radio, we could change uh, how it sounds, we could increase the treble or the bass. So the broadcast, uh, while certainly so connected, is not the actual signal. So we're talking about the third aspect, i.e. ontos, being the consubstantiality between the first two subsets. And of course now we're going to go to the first two. We kind of worked backwards on that one. The agathon and the noose. Principle and attribute, we'd have to go really deep in monism, and it would take about 10 videos to talk about the eristos dias, or the extrinsic attribute of the absolute. But the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are really, really important. Now the second digit, which is also one, because the Fibonacci sequence first five digits are one, one, two, three, five. Okay, the first two digits are one and one. Now we all kind of fundamentally know that the first one is the absolute, or the agathon, yes? Undeniably so. But what about the second one? The second one is not something autonomous or separate. The Greeks called this, and fascinatingly enough, I got a book that tries to get to the heart of uh, one word called tholma. Yeah? And it never gets there. And there's another huge book that I have that tries to get to the word ananke, which very, very crudely translates as necessity. In other words, it can't be any other way. It would be more accurate. 
way, and it never gets to it. It finds all the references of Ananke, or to the Eoristostias, which of course is the second one, which is not a second one. The first two digits, one and one, are one and the same thing. The distinction there is principle and attribute. If you want to know one of the really hardcore secrets, of original Egyptian metaphysics, original Greek monistic metaphysics, vis-a-vis -vis Pythagoras, Plato, Plotinus, Numenius, Syrianus, Iamblichus, Porphyry, on and on and on. That's it. Principle and attribute. Inseparable principle and attribute because there's nothing in this universe that doesn't have at least one attribute. Kind of like light and illumination. What is illumination? Well, illumination is, you know, when light falls in your head, you know, it gives you the ability to see. It's illuminating. No, it's the extrinsic attribute of light. You know, what is light? When we think light, we of course think of illumination. We think of emission, but of course light is not an emission. We all suffer that delusion, as I've mentioned in a thousand different videos. When you flip the light switch, we all think that a light emits light. You know, like there's a, a shower of photons and waves of photons. Ridiculous, of course. The photon is a conceptual abstraction that human beings came up with. It doesn't exist at all. That's not my premise. Even Nikola Tesla and the greatest minds of field theory said there's no such thing as a charge-carrying particle, i.e. the electron. By the way, interestingly enough, the discoverer of the so-called electron, J.J. Thompson, he himself said that the electron was not some sort of, you know, ball of energy, you know, a charge-carrying particle. Because if you think like particles are traveling down the power lines in the back of your house, it's completely ludicrous and asinine. It's kind of an uh, atomistic uh, delusion. He said that an electron is one unit of dielectric induction. That's what he said an electron was, which is not a particle. But uh, anyway, getting back to the extrinsic uh, attribute of uh, the absolute. In other words, we're talking about the second one in the five digits of the first Fibonacci of the first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence, which are one, one, two, three, five. Now, first talking about the first sector, we talked about ontos or being, which is the consubstantiality of matter and spirit. And this is, of course, why human beings, as uh, Gautama himself said, direct quote, the entire world is carried uh, carried forth by a duality. This is the reason why, and then the old saying goes, segneras te gredere, if you don't know yourself, be gone. Or the self is at war with what is not the self. We actually have this uh, consubstantial self when the true spirit looks in the mirror we you know we identify with what deluded person identifies with that but we are actually the transcendent principle or the signal in the case of the radio analogy i love using the radio analogy because people get a clearer picture in understanding these abstract principles of uh of uh obscure metaphysics it's not obscure at all it's just that people don't think like this we were never taught this stuff in high school or college and there are many reasons for that, which I wouldn't get into here, but many, many reasons, including the fact that people's minds are not geared to, to thinking like that, that we identify with this uh, existential self, this persona non grata, the psychophysical broadcast. You know, Bob, Sue, Larry, our feelings, our likes and dislikes, and that would be in reference to the broadcast because even though we all have the same light within us, it is individuated, kind of like a single light bulb. If I had like a big pile of soap bubbles here and there's one light, you know, over here, I would see the exact same light, you know, reflected in a million different soap bubbles. And imagine each one of those soap bubbles is like your radio in your car. Yes, the signal is one thing. I mean, the broadcast is one. You see, the signal is one thing, the broadcast is another. And the broadcast is, of course, individuated. Each and every radio, just like the radio in your car, you could hit the treble, you could hit the bass, the bass. In uh, complicated radios, um, we have beat frequency oscillators, we have RF gain. There's a million different ways you could tweak and mess with the actual signal to personal preferences, just as each one of us, once again, has a light within ourselves. We, of course, all have suffered different likes and dislikes. We have different worldly experiences because the world, as Gautama said, quote unquote, is carried on by duality. Because when we actually suffer mass and magnitude, we then therefore suffer the, what ultimately does not exist, but conventionally does exist, time. And I mean this is really important. If you ever want to understand time, in the case of all monistic metaphysics, it does not exist. Time has no place whatsoever within the liberation ontology of either Greek or Indian monistic metaphysics. 
Time is the, I forget where the quote comes, the fire that we burn in. You actually find that in a Star Trek movie, but they quoted that off of a much earlier source. But time doesn't exist at all. Time is only a measure of mass and magnitudes and their passing. Time doesn't exist. Every ancient culture, both Greek and Indian, including Chinese and, and, uh, and otherwise, said that time is the number four. And that's the reason why there's no number four in the first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five. One, one, two, three, five. What's the only number missing? The only number missing is four. That's the number for time. Time does not exist whatsoever. It does exist conventionally. Because as beings of, and this being, this psychophysical being you see here, which is, you know, uh, empirical and uh, consubstantial, composed of physicality, and a conglomeration of a tuned signal, just like the radio is, yes? Because when we, they used to say in the early days of radios, like, man, that radio's alive. Yeah, it's jumping, right? You know, human beings are the same way. I mean, there is, and this really gets to the heart of metaphysics also, too, the mystic metaphysics, and the logic thereof, because a lot of people think spirituality and metaphysics is, oh, that's like craziness, you know, that's like totally opposed to science. There is nothing more hardcore and scientific than true, genuine, um, uh, true genuine uh, metaphysics, that there is no soul in the body, and that is not a denial of the soul. There is no radio signal in this radio. There's no genuine fire inside this uh, display. There's the consubstantiality of the signal, or in this case the radio, or in the case of a person, the consubstantiality of matter and spirit. That would be the ontos, or the third sector of the consubstantiality between the first sector the agathon and the noose, i.e. the absolute and uh, its extrinsic attribute, and that of uh, matter and magnitude. I spent much of my life reconciling light and matter, and the answer was blatantly obvious. I figured it out about a year and a half ago. I didn't spend an enormous amount of intellectual time on it, but the answer to it was so blatantly obvious. You know, I've kind of humorously called uh, matter hard light. And what I predicted years ago came true about uh, a little over a year ago where um, scientists use ultra-high energy light and then they were able to focus it and they spontaneously generated uh, matter. And that is the case. There's also, too, why we see galactic jets emitting out trillions and trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen. Hydrogen is just nothing other than ultra-ultra-high energy light, way above that of gamma. Yeah, and of course, everything, all matter in the universe is just a compound harmonic of hydrogen. All free neutrons become protons after 17 minutes. Every branch of science admits this fact. I'll stand right aside them and say, yes, your observations are accurate. So there's only one fundamental particle in all matter. It's just, uh, as I've humorously called it, high, uh, hard light or super high energy light. But anyway, getting back to the Pythagorean trinity. We know the four is not present. Everybody loves to talk about time, but time doesn't exist at all. It does exist conventionally, but it doesn't exist ultimately. Um, principle and attribute co-eternal. So you actually have uh, two co-eternals, really one ultimately. Uh, the Agathon and the Eristos Dias. The Greeks called it Tolma. Yes, and they also too called it Ananke or Necessity, but it really translates as, this is just one word. Some ancient Greek words are nearly untranslatable, just like the Pali word Sama, nearly untranslatable. It just means it cannot exist any other way. There is nothing in this universe which can be known or even dreamt of. I mean, things that are completely unreal. Nobody could even dream up something completely fantastically unreal that doesn't have at least one attribute. Nobody could even imagine it. There is nothing in this universe, real or unreal, that doesn't have at least one attribute, and that includes the absolute, the extrinsic attribute of the absolute. Uh, the agathon is the noose. Yes, this is the extrinsic attribute of light, which in light's a compound, it's a coaxial circuit. Extrinsic attribute of light, of course, is illumination. They're inseparable. There's a distinction between the good and what the good does. That being good, right? What is most good is most close to that which is most dear, or we say pali word, pali phrase permopia, that which is most dear, i.e. the agathon, or the good. To emulate the good is to be in, proxim, pro, I mean, to be in proximity to the good. Um, so the Christian trinity and these other trinities that exist in religion, and religion is secularized metaphysics, I'm never interested 
in religions, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a soup that I don't touch for many countless thousands of reasons. I don't care what anybody believes. You know, all the worlds and uh, wars in the world, uh, wars in the world, I'll spit it out here eventually, are fought because, uh, you know, two people are talking about what they believe. I believe. It's like, well, do you believe what I believe? I don't believe what you believe. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do you in and just all the fighting and strife. Because nobody is what they believe. And people need to get that out of their head. And the reason why people suffer that uh, fate over and everything in the world all wars by the way are spiritual wars and what that really means is all wars or uh, metaphysical wars is that people confuse their beliefs and what they see in the mirror when they brush their teeth so that's me that's who i am the most repeated phrase in ancient Pali, and i tell you it's true and there's a reason why it's repeated so so many thousands of times is isakaya namasata the body is not the self or soul, I mean, the absolute self. There, of course, in all branches of monistic metaphysics, logical, uh, Greek and Indian and Egyptian, is that there are two selves, the consubstantial self and the actual self. And that's the exact same. The radio analogy works really good. Don't take the radio analogy too far. There's the two selves regarding the radio. There's the broadcast self, which is tuned, and you, know, you, could, you could tweak the bass and the treble and the, the beat frequency oscillator and the gain. There's that self, and that would be uh, analogous to the existential self, like Ken, Bob, Sue, Larry. You know, we have likes and dislikes. We believe this crap. We don't believe that crap. This is the real reason why all human beings fight. They all have the exact same light within them, but they don't identify with that light, which, of course, would be the signal. They identify with the broadcast. And the broadcast, well, my frequent, you know, you could have two same songs playing, like one on a car stereo and the other one played on like a Bose Supermax. You know, even though you could still tell the lyrics are the same, you know, they sound totally different, right? The exact same signal, but a completely different broadcast because it's tuned and interpreted differently and tweaked differently because we all undergo these dualities of individuation due to the temporal uh, the temporal experiences that we have that are completely different than everybody else and we have our own belief systems and of course you know humanity is at war with every other aspect of humanity and that is never ever going to end people that want utopia are completely delusional it's never going to happen for an existential being who suffers the delusions of false identity seeing self and what is not the self because there is no soul inside this body but that's not a denial of the soul there's no radio signal in this radio the signal is the consubstantiality of what is tuned and interpolated by this radio. Yeah, this is the reason why people, you know, they get old and they're sick and they suffer diseases. You know, their body is uh, like a crappy radio that's partially broken and, you know, they're, you know, they're full of hate and despair and fear. Uh, just like a partially broken radio, the signal is, uh, you know, foobard. You know, the signal is still there, but, you know, it's just a mess, so... And this is the nature of uh, temporal existence. It can't be any other way, which, of course, is another way of saying anakya. Um, but the Pythagorean trinity that these religions took the trinity from is very, very simple. It's uh, the agathon and the nous, i.e. the principle and the attribute, like light and illumination. And then secondly, we have mass and magnitude, which are two co-eternals. When you have mass, you have magnitude. You have magnitude is in reference to mass. Where people do get confused, and I'll talk about black holes here for just a second, we have something that's supermassive, um, but no magnitude. And that doesn't make any common sense to people, but if you understand the conjugate geometry, the magnetic and the dielectric, it's extremely easy to understand. It's where dielectric completely overthrows magnetism, ability to keep anything in the visible universe, because something only has mass due to magnetism having a greater footprint for keeping something within the physical universe, in the Cartesian universe, over that of the dielectric. But when you actually have something supermassive and attains the point source, and it actually vanishes from the physical universe because dielectricity overthrows magnetism's ability to let anything keep a footprint in the physical universe. It literally vanishes down the whole of counter space, not the counter space as a whole. But this is the Pythagorean Trinity. It's not that complicated. It is actually simple. It's not simplex, nor is it simplex to explain. But that is the original trinity of 
the world's best metaphysicians of monistic monism. Plato, Plotinus, Porphyry, Numenius, Syrianus, Iamblichus, Demetius, on and on and on, both Greek and Indian. Yeah. By the way, the, uh, the first two, uh, the principle and attribute in Pali is Brahman, and the second is Avidya. Yeah. Avidya is no different than saying illumination, because illumination's uh, nature is to go forth. Avidya doesn't mean ignorance. It does conventionally, but in regards to the absolute, it just refers to illumination. Avidya is literally prefixual A plus Vidya. Vidya is light. Avidya is the light directed away from its source, its origin, its nexus, its genesis point. And that's just no different than saying illumination. In other words, and there is no original sin or prima causa or first cause. There is no such thing in monistic metaphysics. We're talking about the extrinsic attribute of the absolute, which necessitatively, once again in Nankye, we end up with everything else after the first two of one and one. That being two, three, and five. And four, which does not exist, within the five Fibonacci sequence, first four digits. It doesn't exist there at all because time does not exist. I hope I made that simple. I tried to keep it very, very, eh, I don't want to say superficial, but very, very pedestrian. I hope you like this. Let me know if you have any questions. If you like these videos, any donation is always warmly welcome. And Lux Everitas. Have a lovely week. Goodbye.